model. Sefula, Arpit. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Okay. Sir, so, uh, I yes. watched the recording, sir. Just two doubts I have, sir. Uh, yes. Sir, that's... Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so, Nabil, I'm, Nabil I'm discussing some theory portion today. Uh, yes, I will sir. take some topics of... Uh, that recorded lecture also. I just want to finish this chapter. At the end of the class, I can take your individual doubts. Huh? Yes, sir. So we'll take individual doubts at the end of the class. Yes. So uh, I I have sent you a recording, recording that have few topics, force on a current carrying conduct, uh, the magnetic movement. I was supposed to start this topic today, talk on a current carrying coil in uniform magnetic field. Before starting this topic, I'm just revising the topics that I told you to do from the recording. So there are basically two topics. Huh? So the first topic is force on a current carrying conductor in magnetic field. The first is force on current carrying conductor. Current carrying conductor in magnetic field. So if this is the magnetic field and in this magnetic field, if I place a conductor, this conductor is carrying some current I and the length of the conductor is L and this angle is theta. Then this magnetic field will exert a force on the conductor and that force is given by this relation, i.e. L cross B now. So this is the force on the conductor by magnetic field. When you open this relation, it comes out to be it's I L B sine theta. Now for direction of force, for direction of force, we use right hand thumb rule. We use right hand thumb rule. So the direction of force F is perpendicular to both. It's perpendicular to magnetic field as well as the length of the conductor. So force acting on this wire is perpendicular to both. It's perpendicular to magnetic field as well as the length of the conductor. It's perpendicular to both and is given by right hand thumb rule. So the right hand thumb rule says place your finger along the direction of current. So do one thing. Just apply right hand thumb rule. Place your finger in the direction of current. The direction of current is shown in figure. There is a finger in this direction. And then curl it towards the magnetic field. And then curl it towards the magnetic field. So this is like this. Huh? The current is in this direction. So place your finger in the direction of current and curl it towards the magnetic field. What is the direction of thumb? I need answer from each one of you. In which direction your thumb is pointing? Just write the direction of thumb. Inwards, out, positive x-axis, negative x-axis, y-axis, z-axis. What is the direction of thumb? Write in chat room, please. Noah is Secondly, correct. Let's uh, repeat the question. The question is, this is the direction of current. This is the magnetic field. Place your finger along the direction of current and curl it towards the field. This thumb will give the direction of force. I'm asking about the direction of force. What is the direction of force? Noha is correct. Nabil Ahmed is wrong. Hishma is correct. What about the rest? Sefulla is correct. Arpit, Yashika, Unib, Akshay. Arpit is wrong. It's not downwards. Direction of force is not downwards. Direction of force is inwards. Force will act in inwards direction. Direction of force is inwards. When you place your finger along the direction of current and you curl it towards the magnetic field, the thumb will go into the plane of the board. 
thumb will go into the plane of your uh, screen, mobile phone screen or laptop screen. So the force will go in inwards direction. It's inwards. Force is inwards. So in the direction of magnetic field. Yeah, you have to curl it towards the magnetic field. First, place your finger in the direction of current and then curl it towards the magnetic field. This thumb will point in the direction of force. So thumb is going inwards. The force is inwards. So that is one topic that I'll be using today. Another topic that I will use is uh, magnetic movement. The second topic that I will use is the magnetic movement. See what is magnetic movement. This was also a part of the recording. You're supposed to go through this topic, magnetic movement. So what do you mean by magnetic movement? If you take a current carrying coil, this coil is having some current I. So this coil will behave like a dipole. This will have both the south pole as well as the north pole. So how to identify like which face will act as a south pole and which face will act like the north pole. If the direction of current is clockwise, current is going clockwise. So the face will behave like the south pole. So if your current is clockwise, Clockwise means this is the south pole. If the current is anti-clockwise, if current in this coil is going anti-clockwise, anti-clockwise current means this will behave like the north pole. Anti-clockwise. The north. So clock, if the current is clockwise, then it will behave like the south pole of the magnet. And if the current is anti-clockwise, then it will behave like the north pole of the magnet. So it have both the south pole as the north pole. So if I give you a coil, eh, from your side, if it is clockwise, then from my side, the direction of current will be clockwise or anti-clockwise. I give you a coil. Eh? The direction of current from your end is clockwise. Then for my end, it will be anti-clockwise. Means for you, if it is South Pole, then for me, it will be North Pole. The coil have both the poles, South Pole as well as North Pole. So it's a dipole. It will be a dipole. So the magnetic movement of this dipole, M, is given by the number of turns in the coil, current in the coil, multiplied by the area of the coil. Magnetic movement is a vector. Its direction is perpendicular to plane of coil. Magnetic movement is a vector quantity. Its direction is perpendicular to the plane of coil. So direction of magnetic movement is perpendicular to the plane of coil. Perpendicular to the plane of coil means it's either outwards or it's inwards. So if your coil is in XY plane, then what should be the direction of magnetic movement, Nabil Khan? If I take a coil and I place this coil in XY plane, then what will be the direction of magnetic movement? XY coil is in XY plane, the Khan direction of magnetic movement. Inward, sir. Uh, which axis? I'm asking just axis. Uh, y, Z, X. Coil is in XY plane. Oh, so it's Z axis. Z axis. Your magnetic movement is always perpendicular to the plane of the coil. Uh, Yashika, if your coil is placed in Y, Z plane, then what will be the direction of magnetic movement? X. Along x axis. So it's perpendicular to the plane of coil and is given by right hand thumb rule. Sir, you had a topic for recording. I'll just revise. So these are the two topics that I'll be using. First, the force on a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field. The second is magnetic moment of a current carrying coil. So magnetic moment is just NIA, number of turns in the coil current through each turn and A is the area of turn and the direction of magnetic movement is this. If anyone wants so can take the screenshot of this thing. You are supposed to finish this topic from the recording but if you haven't done it, I have revised it. Just take the screenshot. You don't have time to write this. You know? 
Let's take a screenshot of this also. It's okay. I will start with this derivation. Talk on a current carrying coil in a uniform magnetic field. This is an important derivation, a lengthy derivation. You should know this thing. So this is the magnetic field. Your magnetic field is along x-axis and this is your coil. So I place this coil at some angle theta to the magnetic field. See, this is the magnetic field along x-axis and this is your coil. If I place your coil in this way, what is the angle between plane of coil and magnetic field? Please open your mics. 90 degrees. 90 degree. If I place my coil in the coil in this way, then the angle between the magnetic field and the plane of the coil is 90 degrees. But what if I place my coil in this way? Is this angle 90 degree now? No, sir. No, it's not 90 degree now. So we will derive it assuming that the coil is placed at an angle theta to the magnetic field. Fine. We are not placing it perpendicular to the magnetic field. We are placing it at some angle to the magnetic field. I'm repeating the placement again. For this derivation, the placement is very, very important. This is magnetic field. This is plane of the coil. The plane of the coil is not perpendicular. Rather, the plane of coil is inclined at some angle, theta. This is the angle theta. So you're supposed to calculate the force, total force on the coil and the torque on the coil. So see. It's an important derivation and the lengthy calculation. So we'll do it step by step. So let's first name this coil. The name of the coil is A, B, C, D. A, B, this is point C, and this is point B. I need force on all these sections. I need force on A, B, I need force on B, C, I need force on C, D, and I need force on D. I need force on the coil. So the force on the coil is the sum of force due to each of the straight section. Force on the coil means force on section AB plus force on section BC plus force on section CD plus force on section DA. We'll calculate force on each of the individual sections. Add them up all. Now next, let's calculate force on the individual section. See the length of the AB is B. Angle between them is theta. So we can say that the force on section AB is for the force, I'll be using this relation IL cross B. So the force is current I. Then length of the AB section. The length of the AB section is L AB cross B. Plus, then this is BC. For force on the portion BC, I will take L, BC, cross B. Then we'll take on the force on the section CD. So that's I. Then we'll take the length of the section CD, then cross B. Then finally on the DA section, I is the length of the DA section, then it's cross B. This is the total force. To calculate this force, let's calculate the magnitude. It's I. What is the length of the section AB? A to B, the separation is B. So it's B. Magnetic field is capital B. Then you need sine of angle theta plus LBC cross B. See, BC is downwards. Magnetic field is horizontal. So the angle is 90 degree. Okay, let's calculate the direction also. It's a vector. So let's calculate the direction also. So to calculate direction on the force AB, this is the direction of current. See, this is how we calculate the direction. This is your coil. The current is coming here in this direction. So for the direction, do one thing. Just take your notebook. Take your notebook. Place your notebook in this way, like along x-axis. Place your notebook at some angle with the x-axis. Then place your fingers in this way. It's coming outwards. 
and then curl it towards x axis curl it towards the magnetic field my thumb is going upwards what's the direction of your thumb just write in chat room please are you getting upwards direction just place your finger along the direction of current and curl it along x axis are you getting upwards direction for force okay good okay you're getting the upwards direction as a force is an upwards direction upwards means which axis it's y axis the unit vector along y axis is j cap so you can write this as it's uh, ibb sin theta into j cap when we take bc section hishma what's the angle between the length bc and magnetic field 90 90 so this will be il b sin 90 now let's take the direction of force again now the current is going downwards so apply in this way place your finger in the downwards direction your current is going downwards right in this way and then curl it horizontally towards the magnetic field so if i place it in the downwards direction and curl it horizontally my thumb is coming outwards it's coming out of the plane of the notebook so what is the direction of your thumb just up do it place your finger in downwards direction and curl it in the horizontal direction where is your thumb pointing outwards good more arts what about the rest what is the direction of the force acting on this current carrying wire finger downwards then curl it in the horizontal direction thumb is going outwards positive z axis good so force on the coil is this outwards outwards means k cap similarly when you do the same thing with the lcd portion yes yes so much right answer then place your finger along the direction of current and curl it again towards the magnetic field horizontally thumb will go in the downwards direction so the downwards direction means negative y axis so this is fcd fcd is if i calculate this thing it's lcd the length of the cd is equal to this b it's ibb sin theta and the direction is downwards so minus of j cap when i solve for this da the angle is 90 degrees so this will be ilb sin 90 when you apply right hand thumb rule place your finger along the current and curl it towards the magnetic field the thumb is going inwards inwards means minus of k cap so uh, j cap will cancel with this minus j cap k cap will cancel this k cap the net force is zero net force comes out to this way so whenever you have a current carrying coil in a uniform magnetic field the force is always zero for zero force the condition is the magnetic field should be uniform and you should be having a coil if you have a current carrying coil in a uniform magnetic field the net force through that coil is always always zero there's no exception so you can say that force on current carrying coil current carrying coil in uniform magnetic field is zero so if you have a current carrying coil then force over this coil is zero and this result is independent of shape and size of the coil here i am taking a rectangular coil but instead of a rectangular coil if i take a circular coil of or coil of any shape and size the net force will always be zero there is no exception to this rule just note it down please and please note it fast huh? today i want to finish this chapter i just want to finish this chapter today sir yes sir sir actually sir on the second october sir i have my physics exam mm -hmm. and sir whole the first whole book is coming sir So, so in september in september i will finish uh six chapters only chapter number 7 will be left the chapter number first four chapters are that's length 
lengthy most chapter of your syllabus. Chapter number fifth will take two classes. Chapter number six will take four classes. So, and chapter so number eight is again of one class. Only seventh will be left. But sir, there will be like you no know, much time will be left for revision. But you have to revise it like along with me. You have to revise it. No sir, like this I am doing sir. But the rest of the syllabus, I think. Mm. Sorry. I didn't know that they are small, sir. I thought that they would no. take time. No, so they are small, small chapters. They are very small chapters. Even in second book, there is no, uh, instead of optics, all chapters will take one or two classes. The major portion is up to mag magnetics. If you up, up to magnetics is strong, then the other is straightforward things. So we can like skip that J questions for the, like, the uh, this school exam. Okay, we can discuss it. Can you scroll it? Put it down, then we'll calculate. Yes, written. The next is the net force on the coil is zero. The net force is zero. That means this coil cannot translate. The direction of other forces is this. AB will be acting in upwards direction. CD will be acting in what was the direction of CD? It will act in outwards direction. BC. CD downwards. DA will be acting in the inverse direction. These are the direction of forces. Next, what we can do is, the next task is to calculate torque. After force, you need torque. What is torque, Unib? Aji Unib, what is torque? Noha, what is torque? Sir, it is rotational analog of force. Rotational analog of force. So here, two couples are acting over the coil. One is AB, another is CD. These are two op equivalent opposite forces which are acting over the coil. So these two forces can cancel out each other. Also, FBC and FD, again, these are two couples. FAB and FCD, are equal and opposite forces, but they cannot contribute to torque. The reason is their line of action is same. FAB and FCD are acting along the same line of action. So they cannot cancel each other. I mean, they cannot contribute to torques. Like if I hold this mobile phone in a way, that one force pull this mobile phone in the upwards direction, another force pull it in the downwards direction. Then in that case, this mobile phone cannot rotate. These two forces cannot provide torque. So here, this FAB and FCD are collinear pairs. FAB and FCD are collinear pairs. They are collinear. They will not contribute to torque. 
they will not contribute to talk contribute to talk but this bc and da they are not collinear they are acting along different directions so this fbc and fda fbc and fda will contribute to talk they will contribute to talk they are non collinear they are acting along different lines they are non collinear so if you look at this mobile phone one force is acting in upwards direction act, another is acting in downwards direction their line of actions are same so they are not collinear they are collinear pairs so they can't contribute to talk see they cannot rotate it but if one force is acting in downwards direction up, outwards direction another is acting in inverse direction then this force can rotate this mobile phone and if you look at carefully the line of actions are different this force is acting along different line and this force is acting along different line so their line of actions are different so they can contribute to talk non collinear so fbc and fda will contribute to talk so i'm drawing this portion only i'm drawing cd portion so this is c can you say this. how the line of action is different sir yes see this is acting along if i see take this mobile phone one force is acting over this line huh? this one another force is acting along this line these are two separate lines right they can't be collinear but in the previous case if you take the upwards and a downward force they are acting along the same line so they are collinear they can contribute to talk okay so this is cd and this is the direction of current in cd this is your magnetic field and this angle here is theta now you have to calculate top due to this fbc and fda fbc is acting in outwards direction see i cannot draw outwards on this board so i am drawing outwards here this is fbc similarly this da is acting in inverse direction i cannot draw inwards here so i am taking inwards in this direction this is fda so this is fbc and this is fda one is going this is basically outwards huh? and this is inwards so in case of couple when we calculate torque then we write torque as the product of any of the force multiplied by perpendicular distance between line of action between line of action so when i write force you can take magnitude of any of the force like you can take magnitude of fbc or you can take magnitude of fda take magnitude of any of the force you can take magnitude of bc because both the forces are equal and opposite multiplied by perpendicular distance between them so this is the perpendicular distance between the line of action cn so this is fbc multiplied by cn then how much is fbc fbc is this ilb so this is ilb multiplied by cn so let me calculate each term individually let's call this as equation number this net force is equal to 0 i'm calling this as equation number 1 let's say this is equation number 2 let's first calculate fbc how much is fbc fbc is this stuff ilb so fbc is this ilb let's call this as equation number 3 next you need cn 
See, in this triangle, what is the length of the CD portion, Samula, Cephala? Yes. What is the length of the CD portion, the C to D? Just look at the diagram. What is the length of CD? Hishma, what is the length of the CD portion? Just look at the figure. Sir, CN square plus ND square. No, no. no. It was B, it was B was given. And this angle is theta. So if I calculate sine theta here, not sine theta, if I calculate cos theta here, then cos theta is base upon hypotenuse. So what is base? Base is Cn. What is hypotenuse? That is Cd. So base is Cn. How much is Cd? Cd is B. So what will be Cn? Cn will be B cos theta. So you can write Cn as B cos theta here. Cn as B cos theta. That's equation number four. Next, what you can do is you can just substitute three and four in two. So when you substitute three and four in two, you will get torque, which is ILB multiplied by Cn, which is B cos theta. So the expression of torque is I. L small b into capital B into cos theta. If your coil have n turns, if your coil have n turns, then simply multiply this expression with n's. Your tau will be n i L into b into cos theta. Sorry. So Yashika, one side of this coil is L, another side is b. What will be the area of the coil? Yashika is not in class. Only one side of the coil is L. L into B. L into B will be the area of the coil. Can you find area here in this calculation? This will be the area of the coil, not rectangular coil. This is the area. And what is NIA now? So if I substitute this area, then torque will become its NIA cos theta. What is NIA? Only. Yes, sir. What is NIA? Nabil Ahmed, magnetic, magnetic moment. So it will be M and there is one B here. No? There is one B here. So it will be MB cos theta. So this is the expression of tau. Tau is MB cos theta. There is one problem with this expression. This theta is not the angle between M and B. What is theta here? Theta is the angle between plane of coil angle between plane of coil and magnetic field. So that is theta, the angle between plane of coil and magnetic field is theta. But you don't have plane of coil, you have magnetic moment and magnetic field. Nabil Khan, what is the direction of magnetic moment? Relation between magnetic moment and plane of coil. What is the direction of magnetic moment? Uh, no, not inward. Just read that statement. This statement. Direction of magnetic movement is perpendicular to the plane of coil. So your magnetic movement is perpendicular. Magnetic movement is perpendicular to plane of coil. So that means if this is the magnetic field. If this is the direction of magnetic field and this is the plane of the coil, this is the plane of coil. And this angle is theta. What will be the direction of magnetic moment, Hishma? This is plane of coil. This is magnetic field. Where is the magnetic moment? Where should be the magnetic moment? Perpendicular to the plane. Of coil. So perpendicular to the plane is this, right? This is perpendicular to the plane of coil. This is the direction of magnetic moment. Magnetic moment is perpendicular to the plane of coil. Angle between the magnetic moment and the magnetic field is something, let's call this as alpha. This is the angle between M and B now, alpha. 
theta plus alpha will be 90 degree. So you can write your theta as 90 minus alpha. This is the equation number two. This is the equation number three. This is the equation number four. Next, what we can do is we can substitute four in three. When we substitute four in three, we get torque is MB sine theta. What is theta? Theta is 90 minus alpha. Sorry, not sine. Cos. Cos 90 minus alpha. And cos 90 minus alpha is sine alpha. So the torque is MB sine alpha. Now. So the torque acting over the coil is, the torque is this, it's MB sine alpha. This is the torque acting on the coil. This is the expression of the torque. It's MB sine alpha. Now, magnetic movement is a vector. Magnetic field is also a vector. Torque is also a vector. When we multiply two vectors, we can get third vector only if they are perpendicular. So we can write that your torque is M cross B now. You can write your torque in this way also. It's M cross B. And this torque will try to rotate dipoles so that this magnetic movement gets aligned in the direction of P. So this torque will try will try to align magnetic movement to align magnetic movement along the field. This torque will talk, this torque will act on the dipole, will try to rotate the dipole so that it align itself along the field. So this is the required expression that we need to write. Just note it down from here. Is GN and CD are equal or? Yeah, both are equal. FAB and FCD are equal. FBC and FD are equal. But these two are collinear, so they are not contributing to talk. But yes, FBC and FD are not collinear, so they will contribute. Written. Can I scroll it now? 
एवरी वन आर रिटेन अप टू ना नवीर खान यू हैव रिटेन अप टू द प्रीवियस स्लाइड यस सर Can I scroll it? So the third equation is ILA. Hmm. The third equation is yes, ILB. ILB. Magnetic field. And so this should not be the third equation. This should be the fifth equation. Shafula, have you written up to here? Yes, sir. Nabil, can I scroll it now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, plane of foil means uh, the two uh, rays are separated by theta, right, sir? No, no, the, the coil itself. This is the plane of the coil. Like, if I say that this mobile phone is the coil, this is the plane of the coil. So theta is this is magnetic field. This is plane of coil. They are inclined at some angle. Yeah, you can see this angle. No, this angle is theta. Magnetic moment is not in the plane of the coil. Magnetic moment is perpendicular to the plane of coil. This is the magnetic moment. So the theta is between this plane. This plane is placed in this way. So this angle between the plane of the coil and the magnetic field. This angle is theta. Okay, Nabil. Yes, sir. And magnetic moment is not in the plane of the coil. The magnetic moment is always perpendicular to the plane of coil. So then, why are we taking theta plus alpha? So, if uh, alpha is the angle that the uh, magnetic moment, it's because uh, here when we write m b cos theta, we need angle between m and b. But theta is not the angle between m and b. Theta is the angle between plane of coil and magnetic field. I need angle between m and b to write the proper expression. So I assume this angle is alpha, and I know that. Since magnetic moment is perpendicular to the plane of coil, so theta plus alpha will be ninety degrees. I do all these things just to express this expression in terms of angle between M and B. This is not the angle between M and B. This is the angle between M and B. Alpha. 
you got my point tabil yes sir can i scroll it now okay so after this there are few special cases the special cases are first if math uh -huh. above the figure little bit more at right side uh, equation 5 right yeah that's equation that just done just a second anyone still have any doubt in this derivation akshay hishma unib noha no sir no sir yes na bill noted Yes, now there are few cases the first case is special cases if magnetic field is in plane of coil means magnetic field is in plane of coil that means theta is 0 degree if theta is 0 then alpha is 90 na? because alpha is nothing but 90 minus theta so your torque will be mb sin 90 or it will be mb this is the case when the maximum torque can act on the dipole so if your magnetic field is in the plane of the coil then magnetic moment is perpendicular to the plane of the coil if your magnetic field is in the plane of coil magnetic moment is perpendicular to it so perpendicular to it will be either outwards or inwards this is your magnetic moment so angle between magnetic moment and magnetic field will be 90 so torque will be maximum so whenever it is written that magnetic field is in the plane of the coil that means magnetic moment is perpendicular to the plane of the coil this case is also known as that magnetic field is radial radial magnetic field so all these three terms means the angle is 90 degree and torque is maximum second case is if magnetic field is perpendicular to the plane of coil so if magnetic field is perpendicular to the plane of the coil that means theta is 90 if theta is 90 that means your alpha will be 0 degree means magnetic moment and magnetic field is parallel so torque will be mb sin 0 equal to 0 no torque will act on the dipole no torque will act on the coil and this is so net force was zero we discussed this in the first step of this derivation that net force is always zero now torque is always also zero so your coil will neither translate net force zero means coil cannot move in the forward or backward direction net torque is zero that means your coil cannot rotate so coil will neither rotate 
nor it will translate. So you can say that your coil is in equilibrium, it's stable equilibrium. If I take another case, like the third one, if I take another case, which is case three, case three, case three means if magnetic moment, if magnetic moment, is anti-parallel to magnetic field. What does anti-parallel means, Aksh, Arpit? Magnetic field is anti-parallel. What does anti-parallel mean? What's the angle? So, 180. 180. And what will be the expression for torque if angle is 180? So, this is your magnetic field. And this is your magnetic moment. Magnetic moment is in opposite direction. So the angle alpha is 180 degree. When we calculate torque, then torque will be MB sine 180 and sine 180 is zero. So your torque will comes out to be zero. So no torque will act on the dipole. Since no torque is acting on the dipole and we know that net force is also zero, so we can say your dipole is in equilibrium, but this is not the case of stable equilibrium. This is the case of unstable equilibrium. This is unstable equilibrium. Just note it down, these three special cases. Let me start numericals on this talk. Sir, but uh, hmm. third case, uh, those two forces are acting in couple, right, sir? Hmm. Now are they not producing torque? Why they are not producing torque? Yes, the last case. The last case. It's because now both the pairs are collinear. Mathematically, you got it. This is zero, right? You're asking how physically this is possible, no? Yes, sir. Because for this particular case, when you place your, uh, you place it in this way, your coil is perpendicular to magnetic field. So over this phase, the force will act in this direction. And over this phase, the force will act in this direction. Now, all the four cases will be a collinear phase. Yes, or you can understand it in this in one more way also. In this particular case, the perpendicular distance between line as action will be zero. There will be no perpendicular distance between them. So it's zero. Yes.
Can I scroll it further? One minute, sir. Unib, written? Yes. हाँ जी कैन एस क्रॉल इट नाउ यस सर साइन नाइंटी साइन नाइंटी इज़ इक्वल टू वन राइट सर साइन नाइंटी इज़ वन या बट जो साइन वन ही थी ना जीरो साइन वन ही थी इज़ yeah it's sin 90 uh, second sin theta is 90 but alpha is 0 use alpha here no Okay, written. So that was about a uh, current carrying coil in a uniform magnetic field. So if I summarize it, when you place a current carrying coil in a uniform magnetic field, the net force over the coil is zero. It will start experiencing a torque due to which starts rotating. So that is the summary of it. When you place a current carrying coil in a uniform magnetic field, the net force is zero. So this is one basic NCERT numerical. Uh, so uh, you can take screenshot of the question. Huh? It's a very very lengthy question. Will take ten fifteen minutes for you to write. Let's start this question. We'll solve it together. Just read this question once, then I will start it. Just read. Go through this question, please. Sorry, just one second. Huh? Just one second. Okay, let's solve this numerical together. Huh? Nabil Khan, let's start with you. So you have a hundred turns closely wound circular coil of radius ten centimeter. It carries a current of three point two ampere. What is the field at the center of the coil, Nabil Khan? I have a circular coil. The number of turns are given. Current is this. Radius of the coil is given. I am just asking about the expression to calculate magnetic field at the center, Nabil Khan. No answer. Only magnetic field at the center. What is the expression for magnetic field at the center? Sir, inside. I'm asking about the magnitude, the formula for calculating magnetic field. Sir, mu naught i upon two r. It's mu naught n i over two r. So how much is mu naught? It's four pi into ten raised to the power minus seven. It's capital N. The number of turns are hundred. It's I, which is three point two. 
divided by 2r. So that's 2 into the radius of the coil. It's 10 centimeter. So it's 0 0.1 meter. This is test. Sir, it's nu naught ni by 2 pi r, right? 2 pi r is for straight wire. For circular, it's 2r only. Okay. The pi gets cancelled out. B point. What is the magnetic moment of the coil? Okay, Nabil Khan, at least tell me the formula for the magnetic moment here. We did magnetic moment in the starting of this class. M. Nabil, formula for magnetic moment. Uh, N I A. No, N I A. Magnetic moment is N I. How much is N? Nabil, how much is N? 100. 100. What is I? Current to each turn. 3.2 ampere. What is the area of the coil? It's pi r square, right? Radius of the coil is 0 0.1. So pi into 0 0.1 square. That's the magnetic moment. The unit is ampere meter square. Third part of the question. The coil is placed in a vertical plane and is free to rotate about a horizontal axis which coincides with its diameter. A uniform magnetic field of two Tesla in the direction, horizontal direction exists such that initially the axis of the coil is in the direction of the field. The coil rotates through an angle of 90 degrees and the influence of magnetic field. What are the magnitude of torque on the coil in the initial and the final position? Okay, let's do it. Now, in the second case, third part, he's saying that the you place, place the coil in a vertical plane and is free to rotate about a horizontal axis, which coincides with its diameter. So in the third part, you place the coil in this way, in the vertical plane, you place the coil in y plane. The coil can rotate about its diameter. So let's say this is the diameter of a coil. It can rotate about its diameter. A uniform magnetic field T test like horizontal direction. So this is the magnetic field, your magnet. The plane of the coil is this is the magnetic moment. Because magnetic moment is always perpendicular to the plane of the coil. So initially, in the initial condition, alpha is equal to zero. What would be the torque, Yashika? Initially, your alpha is zero. What will be the expression of torque? Yeah. Torque will also be zero. Huh? Initially, the torque is zero. Then he's saying that the coil rotates to an angle of 90 degree under the influence of magnetic field. So when you rotate your coil by 90 degree, this is the magnetic field. This is the magnetic field. So when you rotate it by 90 degree, it goes, it becomes like this. This is the magnetic moment. The angle becomes 90 degree now. So finally, your alpha becomes 90 degree. And your torque becomes, it's mb sin 90. Sine 90 is 1, so your torque is mv. m we have already calculated, this is m. And b is given that magnetic field is 2 Tesla. Don't take this magnetic field. Huh? This is magnetic field of the coil itself. The coil experience torque always due to some external magnetic field. This is that external magnetic field of 2 Tesla. So you can put m, we have already calculated, b you can put 2, that's D part, what is the angular speed acquired by the coil when it has rotated by 90 degrees? Okay, usually this part doesn't come in a CBSC exam, but we'll do it's an interesting question. The moment of inertia is given. He's asking about the angular speed acquired by the coil. So let's first calculate the torque. So M we have to write, this is the expression of M. So this is 3.2 into 100 into pi. So that's 3.2 into pi, which is 3.14. So it will be around 9.8. Huh? So let's take it approximately to be 10 ampere meter square. 
So when I put m to be 10 and your this is 2 Tesla, the magnetic field, the torque becomes 20 Newton meter. So you have torque now. In the third part of the question is asking about the angular speed. So if you have torque, you can calculate angular acceleration. See, linear acceleration is force by mass. This is linear acceleration. The angular acceleration is torque divided by the moment of inertia. This is angular acceleration, torque by moment of inertia. So this is angular acceleration, torque by I. How much is torque? Torque is 20. How much is moment of inertia? Moment of inertia is 0.1. So you can write that this is 200 radian per second square. The next word is the angular speed acquired by the coil when it has rotated by 90 degrees. So uh, you can use this expression V is U plus 80 also. But this V and U are linear velocities, A is linear acceleration. When it rotates, then we use this expression omega is. Instead of V, we use final velocity, final angular velocity. Instead of U, we use omega naught, initial angular velocity. This is alpha multiplied by T. Or no, we can use third equation. Time is not given. The third equation of motion is this V square minus U square is 2S. When you write this it for circular motion, it's omega square minus omega naught square. It's twice of alpha multiplied by theta. How much is omega you have to calculate? Initially, it was at rest. Omega naught square is zero. Twice of alpha, alpha, this is 200. Theta is asking after rotating by 90 degree. So 90 degree means pi by 2. So this 2 and 2 will cancel. So you have omega square, which is equal to 200 pi. You can calculate omega, which is root over 200 pi. So your omega will be 10 root over 2 pi radian per second. The last part is not that important, but yes, first three parts are important. No down. Can I scroll it now? See, this example is very, very important for school exams. Like recently in Delhi, uh, the midterms of almost all schools are over. So I went through the question papers of four or five schools out of four or five schools and three schools I got. I find this question, the question paper of midterm exam. This is very, very important. If they want to make it tough, then they will uh, give you the last part. But usually they don't give the last part. Sir, can you show, show the C answer also? Which one? C. Yes,
I'm giving you a uh, one question of NCERT in homework. Try that at your home. If you can't solve this numerical, then I will explain it in the class. But try to go through that question. Just give me one second. Now. And sir, how did you get magnetic field as two? Magnetic. It's given in the question. Part of the question it's given in the question that magnetic field is two. Four point two. Okay, sir. In the question it's given that magnetic field is two. So the homework question is four point two uh, four of NCERT. That's the homework. So is it example or exercise? No, no, exercise. Four point two four. Additional question X four point two four. That's a very very important question. If you can't solve it, just tell me. We'll discuss it in the next class. Huh? Note down the third part also. Can I scroll it now? Everyone have written up to you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. After this, the next is a uh, moving coil galvanometer. So that's basically question, the same question 4.24. So let's try it. If you can't solve it, then I will explain it. Last topic galvanometer of this chapter. See, what is galvanometer? Huh? See, galvanometer is a device. We use this device to detect current or voltage. For the principle of galvanometer, it's, the principle is simple. A current carrying coil uniform magnetic field will experience a torque. So if you take a uniform magnetic field and within that magnetic field, if you place a current carrying coil, then that current carrying coil will experience some torque. And that torque is given by this expression M cross B. Or you can write that torque is MB sin alpha. So the same coil that we did in the previous section is used in galvanometer. So what happens in galvanometer, the galvanometer have, uh, this is the construction. This have two magnets, North Pole and South Pole. In between two magnets, we place the soft iron core. This is the soft iron core, a cylindrical core. It's basically a cylindrical core in this way. And on this cylindrical core, we uh, wound the wire. We wound the wire in this way, lengthwise. And this is the coil. Huh? This is the coil. And from the coil, we attach the spring. And with this spring, we attach the pointer. So the pointer which rotates and gives the reading of the galvanometer, this is that pointer. So we have magnetic poles, cylindrical, soft iron core. The magnetic field here is radial. We have already discussed radial magnetic field. Radial magnetic field means your alpha is always 90 degree. So alpha is 90 degree means your torque will be maximum radial magnetic field. So just do one thing, note it down up to here. Then I will show you an animation. The three-dimensional thing, you should see this particular animation. Then only you can... Just note it down up to here. I'm finding that animation.
Just draw this diagram that I will show you the three dimensional view of. Anji, everyone have written? Can I scroll it down? Over. Oh, one minute. Yes, sir. See, in magnetics, usually uh, there are three three questions which are five markers. One is derivation of magnetic field on the axis of a current carrying coil. Second is the magnetic field or uh, the torque due to a current carrying coil. The last section and this one, moving coil galvan. Adil coil could be rectangular, but usually in galvanometer, no one takes rectangular coil. All take cylindrical coils. I will show you why you must, you may be feeling that coil. Core, you are asking about the core or the coil? Core is always cylindrical. But when you wound that coil over the core, then it can come somewhat of cylindrical shape. It's not the exact rectangular. I'm showing you the exact three-dimensional diagram of this moving coil galvan. Just one minute. Yes, everyone have written up to here? Uh, yes, sir. Sure. Uh, this is the three-dimensional This is the three dimensional view. This is the three dimensional. So, this is your core, cylindrical core. So, over the core, you wounded this uh, coil here. So, Umar, you can see from here, it's not exact rectangular. It's the ends are not sharp, the ends are curved. It's not exact rectangular. So, this is the exact thing of moving coil galvanometer. These two are the magnetic poles. This one and this one are connected to the poles of the magnet. And this thing here is the spring. This is the spring. The pointer is attached with this spring. This is moving coil galvanometer. Okay. Now let's come to the work. So theory and working have just two important parts. One is the torque acting on the coil. So when you place this current carrying this coil inside the magnetic field, and when you connect this galvanometer to an external circuit, some current starts passing through the coil. And when the current starts passing through the coil, the coil will experience a torque. What is the expression of torque, Nabil Ahmed? Oh, is equal to M cross PC. M cross B, or you can write this as C. N is the number of turns in the coil. A is area of each turn. B is strength of magnetic field. Current through galvanometer. And this theta is the deflection in the galvanometer. The deflection means this one. Here to here, this is the deflection in the galvanometer. You can calculate the magnetic moment of the coil, which is NIA. The torque on the coil by magnetic field is M cross B, MB sin alpha. Here we are using the radial magnetic field. Magnetic field is radial. This is radial magnetic field. We have discussed radial magnetic field in the previous special cases. Radial magnetic field means angle is 90 degree. Alpha is 90. So when you place alpha equal to 90 here, it comes out to be MB sin 90, sin 90 is 1. So torque will comes out to be MB. This torque will rotate your coil. But now, it's not just the coil. There is also a spring connected. See, what is the role of spring? If I take a spring, and if I start rotating that spring, I don't have spring. Show it this way. Let's do it with this wire. Huh? So if I have this wire, and if I start twisting this wire, I'm rotating this wire. Huh? I'm rotating this wire. And when I uh, leave this wire, 
it will rotate in the opposite direction. It will try to retain its original configuration. So what happens in the spring is, see, it's not a spring, so the, the twist in the opposite direction is not that good. But if you have a wire, you applied some torque over the wire, the wire will rotate in one direction. And when you leave it, there is a restoring torque on the wire, which will try to bring the wire in the initial configuration, in the starting configuration. So if you take a spring and you start rotating that spring, then what happens is a restoring torque develops in the spring. That restoring torque depends upon the twist. The more you rotate the wire, more will be the restoring torque. Like if I take this wire, if I just this wire, I rotate it by some angle. There is some restoring torque. But I rotate it by greater angle. Like if I keep on increasing the twist, then restoring torque will also increase. At a point of time, it's, it's very uh, tough for me to rotate it further. I can't rotate it further. So whenever you have a spring and you rotate the spring, a restoring torque gets developed in the spring. So what happens here is when you pass current through the galvanometer, current will pass through the coil and due to the current, the coil will rotate. The coil will experience this torque, MB sine 90 or MB sine alpha, coil will experience this torque. I put the value of M here, so it's an IAB. But since this coil is also connected to a spring, so when a coil rotates, the spring also rotates. And a restoring torque develops in the spring. For a spring, we divide, define a parameter K, which is known as restoring torque per unit twist of the spring. Restoring torque per unit twist means twist develop in the spring when you rotate it by one degree or one radius. So when you rotate it by theta angle for one degree, the restoring torque is K. When you rotate it by two degree, restoring torque is 2K. When you rotate it by 10 degree, rotate, restoring torque is 10K. When you rotate it by theta, the restoring torque is K. In equilibrium, applied torque and restoring torques are equal. You can write this as an I A B will be equal to K theta. Or you can say that I is K theta by any. I is directly proportional to theta. So this theta is the twist. This theta is the deflection in the galvanometer. This deflection here is this theta. So you can say your deflection is directly proportional to current. The greater amount of current passing through the wire, greater would be the deflection. They are directly proportional. If you increase I, the theta will also increase. So we get a device in which deflection directly depends on current. So if you increase current, deflection will also increase. And this way you can at least decide whether current is increasing or decreasing. This we will study in the next section that we don't use galvanometer for measurement. We rather use galvanometers for detection. You have written up to here, theory and what? Note it down. And tell me if you still have doubts. Hishma, you have doubts? Safula? Uh, no, sir. Nabil Khan, clear? Yes, sir. Akshay? No, no sir. Yashika, Unib? Sir, what does it mean by at equilibrium, sir? At equilibrium means the torque which is applied by the magnetic field gets balanced by the torque of uh, the restoring torque of the spring. When these two torques get balanced each other, your system is in equilibrium. Yes, okay. Yes, sir. Okay, start writing it. We'll finish it today. We'll finish the chapter today. And by the end of this week, maybe if I take one extra class on Thursday and one on Friday, we can finish chapter number six also. No, we have very small, small chapters. Seventh will take some six, seven lectures. And then topic optics will take many lectures. And after optics, we all chapters will take one, one, one lectures. One lecture. You can wind up the syllabus very fast. These first four chapters are very, very easy chapters.
you could scroll down. Um, sir, what uh, TOR R uh, stands for? Yes. When they cancel each other, then only your pointer stops. No. What does TOR R stand for? Restoring TOR. Restoring TOR. Torbi stands for torque applied by magnetic field. Everyone have written up to here? Yes, okay, this theta is the deflection when current I pass through it. So what will, be, how to calculate a deflection when unit current passes through it? Yeshika, how to calculate the deflection for unit current. This theta is the deflection for I current. Arpit, this theta is the deflection for I current. How do you calculate deflection for unit current? Well, simple unitary method, yeah. Sefula? 
theta is deflection for i current what will be the deflection for unit current maybe alpha no it's theta by i unit is no theta is the deflection for i current for unit current what you will do you will divide it by i it's like you have cost of 10 balls i'm asking you the cost of one ball so what you will do you will divide it by the number of balls na am i clear now yes sir so that deflection for a unit current is known as current sensitivity so current sensitivity is nothing but deflection per unit current so it's deflection divided by current so when you put i from here to here you will get instead of i i could write right k theta by nab the theta theta gets cancelled out nab by k this is the current sensitivity so current sensitivity simply means deflection in the galvanometer when a unit current passes through it when a current of 1 ampere passes through it then the deflection is known as current sensitivity so what should be its unit it's theta by i what should be its unit arpit si unit arpit what should be the si unit of current sensitivity it's theta by i akshay what will be the unit here, si unit here? radiant by coulomb वैल्यू ऑफ के so it's directly proportional to when so we'll can increase it by the increasing the number of turns but there is a problem here so if you increase the number of turns then the size of galvanometer will also increase so if you make the number of turns very large then your galvanometer will become bulky very very bulky galvanometer so you can increase it n but you can't increase it beyond a limit because after that your the size of the galvanometer will also increase you can increase the current sensitivity by increase the area but again when you increase the area of the coil means you are increasing the size of the core so that will again make it bulky so that can't so, be done yes so we can increase the area by increasing the number of turns right no 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 no, no. this is the area na like oh. that is the same thing right that that you are doing in the first term na no? first case but this is your coil just i'm coming to it where is that animation yes. so this is your coil na no, arpit this is the core and this is the coil how will you increase yes. this area of the coil by increasing the number of turns okay so got it but again the the issue with the area is same to increase area you have to increase the size of the core when you increase the size of the core it will make your galvanometer bulky again the next thing is by using a very strong magnetic field for this we use very strong magnetic field and also we use soft iron core so what does soft iron core do soft iron core just increase the strength of your magnetic field using strong magnetic field we can do it using soft iron core and then for to have high current sensitivity you can have smaller value of k smaller value of k means k is restoring torque per unit twist means you rotate your coil by 1 degree the torque developed is k when you rotate your coil by 2 degree the torque that the twist developed will be twice of k for unit twist the restoring torque is k so this depends upon the nature of material so you need a material you have to build your make your uh, spring of a material which have a very low value of k so the smallest value of k is for uh, phosphorus and bronze strip there's an alloy which consists of phosphorus and bronze that alloy will have a very small value of k so your galvanometer can have maximum current sensitivity the next is voltage sensitivity this unib will tell unib if current sensitivity is theta by i then what will be the voltage sensitivity Unib is not in class, huh? Sir, theta by V, sir. Theta by V, yeah. Huh? Theta by voltage. 
and what is voltage on ip ir yes sir. you can write that your voltage sensitivity is theta by v theta by ir and what is theta by i unip current sensitivity current sensitivity so that's current sensitivity divided by resistance so this was the expression of current sensitivity it's nab by k so when you put nab by k here it's nab by kr that's the voltage sensitivity so again we can to increase voltage sensitivity you increase number of turns but remember when you increase number of turns then resistance will also increase because on increasing number of turns you are increasing the length of the wire so if you make the number of turns 100 times then your resistance will also become 100 times so this will get cancelled out so all factors are same except the number of turns on increasing and resistance increases vl will not change so this is a conceptual question important conceptual question on increasing number of turns your voltage sensitivity will not increase the reason is when you increase number of turns then your resistance of the coil will also increase so they will just cancel out each other's contribution so voltage sensitivity will remain constant no doubt then we'll do the numericals the numerical from this topic comes from the conversion conversion of galvanometer into ammeter conversion of galvanometer into voltmeter you will get questions from there tell me once you have written thank you is called answer yes scroll down okay more Yes, can I scroll it further? Yes, sir. These all are conceptual questions. All these four points are four conceptual questions. If you go through the previous year's questions of CBSE, you will find this question also. You will find this question also. You will find this one also. All one marker questions.
हाँ जी कैन आई स्क्रॉल इट नाउ वन मिनट से सी उमर देखिए सी सी उमर इन दिस एक्सप्रेशन आई एस इज एन ए बी बाई के सो आई एस इज इनवर्सली प्रोपोर्शनल टू के सो इफ के फॉर अ स्प्रिंग इज मिनिम देन द करेंट सेंसिटिविटी ऑफ द गलवानोमीटर विल बी मैक्सिम सो वी चूज अ स्प्रिंग मेड अप ऑफ अ मटेरियल विच हैव अ लोअर वैल्यू ऑफ के सो दैट मटेरियल इज फॉस्फरस एंड ब्रॉन्स so we choose an alloy made of phosphorus and bronze this alloy will have minimum value of k and the maximum value of i s yeah is it clear now can i scroll it further Sir, could you bring the last point again? Yeah. See, IS here is inversely proportional to K, right? This is the fourth point. Yeah. Show so, it. This one, na? Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm saying the same thing. IS is inversely proportional to K. So, if your K is minimum, then your IS will be maximum, right? Yes. K sir. depends upon the nature of material, the material that you are using to make your spring. so the material which have the lowest value of k is the phosphorus bronze alloy of phosphorus and bronze so we use a strip of phosphorus and bronze to make the spring of the galvanometer so that k is minimum and is is maximum yes nabil clear now yes sir sure. right voltage and sensitivity Can I scroll it? so that was about moving coil galvanometer just a 15 to 20 minute discussion of ammeter and voltmeter is left that we will finish in the next class so i will stop here next class will continue sir one minute sir i will try to keep one class on thursday also so if i can keep take one class on thursday and a class on friday then most probably we'll finish chapter number 6 also seven is lengthy seven will take six but
Yes. Can I scroll you further? Okay, this is this is over. Okay, so let's stop here. Wednesday we'll continue with this thing. A meter, voltmeter, and finish chapter number five also. Chapter number five is very, very small. Okay, let's stop here. Uh, sir? Yes. So can you repeat that equation R equals to? Uh, this one? Rho L by. This one? Rho. Yeah, yes, sir. This is the expression yes. between resistance and length of the wire. This we do okay. in chapter number three, current electricity. R is rho L by. Rho is resistivity. R is resistance. Length L is the length of the wire and A is area of cross section. So R okay. is proportional to the length. Huh? If you increase length, the resistance will increase. Class over. You can leave. Also, can you explain this point to me again? I didn't understood. Yeah. This, this, this last point. Yeah. Yes, sir. I... Sure. The last point says, see, this V S is depend on N and R both, right? And this N and R depends upon each other. Like R depends upon the length. If you increase the number of turns, then length will increase. When the length increase, the resistance will increase. So if you make the number of turns to be double, if you make it 2N, then your resistance will become double. So they get cancelled out. Also. So increasing N, Vs is not increasing. That's the last point, sir. Yes, Omar. Thank okay, you, sir. Thank you. Happy to Oh, thank you, Neep. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, sir. Okay, bye.